Well, it's been a while since I've did a chuck wagon cook, so uh, we've already done a chuck wagon cook. But I thought that I would break it down and do do just various parts of a cook to help you uh, maybe help you out in doing some of the details. So I thought what we'd do here for just a little short series was make, making a coffee pot. Now, as you can see, this uh, this fella here. Judy can zoom in on him. I use this coffee pot here to, as a guide to make this one here. Let me turn it around here. And as you can see, I hit it pretty close, I think. On a coffee pot, at least a western coffee pot, old style, you have uh, this little It's not a bale, I don't know what you'd call that. Handle, it's sort of a handle, but it's not really a handle. I guess you could call it a handle. But anyway, what that what this thing is here is to where when you pick your pot up off the fire, it's hot. So you can't you certainly can't hold it here or you'd burn your finger unless you had a pair of gloves on. But uh, what most cooks usually do is they have a hooked rod which they use on their chuck wagons and everything to lift lids and things. They just hook that up right there so when they're pouring a cup of coffee, you know, they hold it with this up here and then just use their rod to tip the coffee pot to pour it. So in making the coffee pot, we certainly want to get that detail in. Now naturally you've got your spout here and you've got the little thing right here which holds your bale and you've got the handle. Now this part up here is something I added because uh, when uh, I hang my coffee pot on its uh, the rod that goes over the fire, it's too high. So I wanted to drop it down, so I just added this wire attachment which drops it down closer to the fire. It works pretty good. And as you can see, this one's been used quite a bit down here. The, speckled pattern of the uh, of this style coffee pot has just totally disappeared down here on the bottom due to the smoke from the from the fire and this is what really makes a makes a coffee pot look good and as you can see by the picture here I tried to duplicate that look by painting this area black down below so that's what we're going to do also so anyway, let's get busy here and make a coffee pot. Alright, I have my block of basswood here. Now this basswood, piece of basswood is, looks like about two and three quarter inches tall. I allowed a little slop on the top here. I'm after a pot that's about two and a half inches tall. Okay, so I always allow myself a little slop. So I made this one two and three quarter inches. And I cut it out of a piece of two inch basswood, so I have two inch, it's just two inches square. The grain is running up and down with the long part of the block. Now what I want to do first is I want to uh, find my center, which I'll do here just by making an X here. Like that. And what I'm going to do is establish the bottom of the coffee pot. So I'll just use my compass here. On the short side because it's not exactly square. So now this this is the bottom. Remember that this is the bottom of the coffee pot. Okay. Now I'll take it over to the saw to cut out the blank. And another thing, remember when you're cutting out your blank, remember which area on the circle is going to be your spigot. So what I do here, I'm looking at this, so this is the biggest corner. These two are the biggest. Looks like this one here is actually a little larger than that one there. So I'm going to remember that and uh, let's make a mark here because I don't want to cut this part off. I want to cut that off, that off, and that off, but I do not want to cut this part off here. So let's take it over to the bandsaw and set up the bandsaw to cut this blank out. Come around, move the camera around here. Just pick it up and bring it around. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I want to set my table up to where I can cut this at a slight angle. So remember now, we don't want to cut off this corner. So let's just set it next to the uh, blade. And let's just, oops, let's just tip this at just a slight angle. That's about what you want, or about right there, okay? Lock that down. Okay, now, I don't want to cut off that one, remember. <laughs> I want to, just want to emphasize that, because if you cut off that, then your spigot's gone. Okay, so let's start right here on this edge here. Now remember, we're going to have to come into the wood before we reach that point, okay? Okay, so there we go. See, we got our spigot on there. See, it already looks like a coffee pot. So we can throw that away. Okay, so now we've got our blank cut out. It already looks starting to look like a coffee pot. So let's just look at our coffee pot here a moment. Now we know we got our lid here. Well, naturally the lid's not going to come off here, but we're going to carve it in there. And it drops down a little bit before it hits this spigot. Well, this spigot has kind of a curve to it. Well, we don't have to worry about that. So let's just eyeball it here and say it comes down to about right there. So we'll draw a line around there. Hopefully we'll meet here on the other side. Looks good. Like that. All right. And then we want our pot spigot to come down. We're going to make it big at the moment because we want to allow ourselves a lot of slop. Always get in the habit of allowing for mistakes. And then when you make one, you can uh, get yourself out of a mess because you've already, you knew you were going to screw up. So you allowed for it. I know I'm going to screw up sometimes, so I always allow for it. Okay, so also we can, you know, you're going to have your little bell holder here on each side. So looking at it from the top, if we draw a line straight across the middle of this thing and come down, we can, we know we're going to position that bell holder right in there somewhere, but we're not going to worry about that now. So, okay, so now what we want to do, first off, is we can start just by taking our knife and roughing up, carving off all the sun areas of this blank like that to give it that whittle look. See there? How, that, how nice that looks. So I'll go ahead and do that. There's no reason you need to watch me. All right, I'm just drawing my lines back on here. Okay, now what we have to do now is remember your line right down here. Bring that around to the front like that and then draw, draw a line up the same angle as on the back here. Just sort of eyeball that in there. You have to just sort of do this by guesstimation. But you certainly want it the same angle. So now what we need to do is take out this material right there. Being careful not to cut up into your spigot. Keep 
keep your eye on what you're doing. here a little bit and get this carved down to my line so I can actually see what I need to do. I don't know if you all are aware of this, but Judy and I have a chuck wagon, full-size chuck wagon, which uh, we occasionally take out and do demonstration cooking and bake biscuits, pass out coffee, bake pies, all sorts of things. And if you've ever gotten up early on a cold morning and walked out to the campfire next to the chuck wagon and pulled your, poured yourself a hot cup of coffee, boy, that's living. Okay, we're getting there. Just about got it. Can you see now how I brought this side in as Judy pulls my hair? Okay, so we got that. Now, looking at it from the front, you're going to take a line right from that spigot and right down through the center to right there. And we want to carve down to that line, just like that. See there? And then all on the same angle of the chuck of the chuck wagon, of the coffee pot, you're gonna carve into there to that line. details like this. It's just so much fun. Let's see how close you can get to the real article. See, this will give you an excuse to go out and buy you one of these neat coffee pots. There, see there? <laughs> see there, as Judy pushes my head out of the Now you just do that on the other side. And when you're making coffee in one of these pots, get this down here. I have a coffee grinder where I grind my own beans, just like the cowboys used to do. And the little scoop in the coffee grinder equals just the amount of coffee that needs to be dumped into this pot. So you fill your coffee pot up with cold water. You dump your coffee grounds in there on top of that. Give it a quick stir. And you put it on the fire. And you get it going to a good rolling boil. And then after that, you go get you a cup of cold water and you pour it in there real slow and what that does is it takes all those coffee grinds down to the bottom 
And then if you remember that, when you're pouring your coffee real gently like, you'll never get grounds in your coffee. But the beauty of cowboy coffee is it's going to have grounds in it. I mean, it would be cowboy coffee didn't have grounds in it. So if you go to a chuck wagon, you say, hey, my coffee doesn't have any grounds in it. You know something's amiss and they're not doing it the right way. At least that's the way I look at it. Okay, so we got that done. Let's just look at it here. I got a few cut lines on here I want to get rid of. we can start shaping the spigot but I don't want to do that yet until I get the top fairly rounded out because uh, you know you don't want to get down to the final detail too quickly or you'll end up messing it up so you know always allow allow for those things when you're when you're carving so what I'm going to do now is come in here and take this out Complete my circle here. Right there. So we want to take this off back to that point. Just holding that up in the so I can see the dark behind it to make sure I got it right. And it's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna even it out now. I'll dress it up. Get rid of my pencil lines here. center point here, which is right there, and we're just going to start relieving the top, okay? Let's do this roughly at first. And look at it. Yep, we're going in the right direction. all blanked out here and then in the next segment we'll add the little details to the pot. Whittle on her there till we get her perfectly round.
cutter from the front. This side here is a little low, so we want to get that other side to match. This is what I mean about leaving yourself enough wood to correct anything that needs to be corrected as you're going along. Alright, that looks good. Now we can go ahead and shape our spigot. So I'm going to take a little more off of there. And then start from there straight down like that. And then we're going to round this back to the bottom point. Before we had it kind of straight, now we're going to round it like that. And do the other side. Keep our line straight right there. And you don't have to have it at a perfectly sharp edge. You don't want that. This edge is rounded. Looks good. Now I'm going to take a little bit more off of this edge here. for some biscuits and jelly. There we go. Looking good, looking good. Alright, now I think our video is getting kind of long. Let me draw my line back on here. I'm going to have to make a correction here. Okay, I think, I think we're going to stop right there. There, we've got her all blocked out now. As you can see, we've hit it pretty close, I think. So next time, what we're going to do is we're going to do our detail around the lid here, where the lid meets the pot. We're going to add these two things, the little ridge around the bottom, and carve our opening here in the center. And we'll pretty well have her done. So, until next time, I'll talk to you later.